Mary Collins, 20 years old, lived in the city of Charlotte, North Carolina. She was a very active, happy, energetic, and positive young girl. But there were many difficulties and challenges in her life. She was born with a rare genetic disorder called DeGeorge syndrome. Mary had some problems with speech development. It was difficult for her to count in her head. She often forgot things, was confused about time and space, could not drive, and was very trusting of people, which ruined her. She was vulnerable and could be easily manipulated. On March 28, 2020, Mary was supposed to meet her high school friends, 24-year-old Kelly and 21-year-old Levy. The friends invited Mary over to their house for a visit. Kelly and Levy called an Uber cab for her at 2.30 p.m. Mary got in the cab and drove to the apartment, but she never came back. Mary's family became concerned when she stopped contacting them and didn't appear on their social media pages, which was not like her at all. They called Mary, but she didn't answer the phone. The last video she posted on her page was a video from her apartment of her and two friends walking down the hallway laughing. It was obvious that the friends were having a good time together. Relatives calmed down and thought that she had just stayed with a friend and her phone had run out of battery. At that time, the quarantine had just begun and people were busy preparing for self-isolation and buying food. Her loved ones were no exception and were also preparing. So they were distracted and wondered where Mary was. Two days passed, but there was still no word from Mary. Her loved ones had access to her cell phone records and were able to find out that her phone had been inactive for two days, and the last known location of the phone was at a friend's house. Her grandmother Mia went to the house to find Mary and bring her home. But it wasn't easy to get in. There were guards and security cameras everywhere. Grandma waited for one of the residents to come out and sneaked in. She saw the mailboxes and found Mary's friend Kelly's name and address on one of them and went there. Grandma knocked on the door and it was opened by Kelly and Levy, who told her that Mary had left them a few hours ago. At that moment, Grandma became very worried because she realized that something was wrong. After all, Mary was confused about space and never went anywhere alone. She would just get lost. In fact, things were not so easy in Mary and Kelly's friendship. Kelly used to bully Mary all the time because of her developmental problems, even telling her to commit suicide. Later, they made up and became friends, and the grandmother thought that maybe something could happen between the girls again. Because her granddaughter was too trusting and very eager to have friends, she could be easily manipulated. The grandmother reported Mary's disappearance to the police on March 30th, two days after she went missing. The police were reluctant to take up the case. They felt that Mary was old enough to decide for herself where and with whom she wanted to be. They were sure that the girl would return later herself, and now she was just spending time with some other friends. The police arrived at Kelly's apartment, but no one answered the door. Then the officers just drove off. Mary's loved ones felt that she must still be there, in Kelly's apartment. They were concerned about the girl's condition and the fact that the last activity on her phone had been recorded there. They pleaded with the police to take the case more seriously and search the apartment thoroughly, but the police did nothing and did not even check the surveillance footage of the apartment complex to see if Mary had left there. They looked around, but found no sign of Mary's presence, no clutter or anything suspicious. However, he did not let them see the back room, and that made them suspicious. Soon, Mary's mother and grandmother were called by the police and urged to back off the investigation. It turned out that Kelly and Levy had written a statement to the police saying that Mary's relatives were stalking them and not giving them peace of mind. They don't feel safe. Many people were shocked by this, but they did not back down. To them, it was another warning sign that something was wrong and that the boyfriends were just afraid of what they might find out. Then the relatives took matters into their own hands. Unable to get access to the surveillance video, they decided to take turns watching Kelly's house around the clock to see what was going on. During one of these watches, Mary's mother and grandmother knocked on Kelly's door, and the door was opened by Levy, who unexpectedly let them in. Mia again asked the detectives to look at the surveillance tapes from the apartment complex to make sure that Mary had actually left there, but they refused, saying that they supposedly needed a search warrant to do that, which they didn't have and that there was no reason to suspect the friends. Therefore, they would not be able to see those videos. The grandmother told the detectives that Levy would not let them into the back room of the apartment and that they were probably hiding something there, but the cops just threw up their hands. 
Mary's family continued to follow her friends. They had already met with the security guards, and when they learned of Mary's disappearance, they were sympathetic and allowed her grandmother to view the surveillance footage. But as it turned out, the footage had already been erased because many days had passed. If the police officers had gone to those tapes immediately after Mary's disappearance, when they were questioned by her relatives, they would still be there, and the officers would have been able to determine for sure whether Mary had left the house or not. That same day, the police finally came to search the friend's apartment when they felt enough time had passed, but they found nothing. They thoroughly searched the entire apartment, including the back room, and looked in all the closets and under the bed, but Mary was nowhere to be found and they saw nothing suspicious. The next day, there was finally a break in the case. One of Kelly and Levy's friends called the police station and told a story that shocked everyone. He knew where Mary had been all this time and what had happened to her. According to him, Mary's body was still in the friend's apartment. As it turned out, Kelly, Levy, and their friend James tied Mary up, duct taped her mouth shut, beat her in the bathroom, and then killed her. James told a friend about all of this, and the friend called the police. The anonymous friend also said that the trio didn't know how to dispose of the body. James then called his friend named America, whom he had recently met on Tinder, and asked her to help clean up the mess, and she agreed. Another chance to find the girl was missed. As it turned out, the police didn't issue an Amber Alert for Mary until April 3rd, even though every hour counted. All this was due to the non-serious attitude of the police towards the case. The four of them wrapped Mary's body in elastic bandages, several layers of duct tape, and garbage bags. They treated her thoroughly with household chemicals and stuffed the body into the mattress. They added spices to mask the smell. The police responded to the 911 call and returned to search the friend's home. They searched the apartment thoroughly and found Mary's body on the same mattress that the officers had lifted when they searched for Mary under the bed. Why the police didn't find her body the first time is not at all clear. According to them, it had been carefully hidden and not seen. Mary's body was in a terrible condition. She was partially clothed, severely beaten, and had 133 stab wounds all over her body. Most of the wounds were on her face, head, and back. She had probably been attacked from behind. There were also many defensive wounds on her arms. Mary fought back to the end. The pathologist could not determine the day and time of death. It was early decomposition. The relatives were even more distraught. Mary could have been killed recently, and her death could have been prevented if the police had taken the case more seriously and immediately checked the surveillance footage and then the friend's apartment. Three friends, Levy, James, and Kelly, were arrested. Mary's documents and bank card were found hidden among papers in her apartment. Investigators found numerous messages from December 19, 2019, that Kelly and Levy sent to Mary on Instagram. Kelly intimidated Mary in the correspondence, then said it was just a joke and put up with it. Mary didn't understand her bullying because of her diagnosis and thought it was normal. James already had a criminal record. He had been arrested several times since 2017 for drug possession and theft, and had already served short sentences behind bars. Kelly had one arrest for assault, but was not charged with anything and was released the same day. Mary's cause of death was multiple stab wounds. Most of the wounds were not serious. It is likely that the so-called friends simply enjoyed torturing Mary and had deliberately inflicted many small superficial cuts to prolong their pleasure. Their goal was not just to kill her, but to torture her for a long time. On April 4th, the day Mary's body was found, Levy posted a strange message on his Twitter page, a cartoon chicken with a knife. Apparently, he was proud of what they had done. Levy had no arrests or criminal record. Kelly, Levy, and James were charged with Mary's kidnapping and murder and faced life in prison. An 18-year-old Tinder girl named America, who helped them hide the body, fled to another state. On June 2, 2020, she was found and arrested in Colorado charged with accessory to murder and concealing a murder. Her lawyer insisted that the girl had been forced to help hide the body. And the mastermind and leader of the whole crime was Kelly. She was the one who gave everyone their orders. America was then released on bail, and the trio, Kelly, Levy, and James, remain in custody awaiting trial. The trial has dragged on and is constantly being rescheduled due to restraining orders. I will continue to monitor this case and will keep you informed of the court's decision.